Uh, my name is Jason Crosser, C-R-O-S-S-E-R. I was uh, born in, uh, I'm from Iowa, so I grew up, grew up in Iowa, yeah. And I moved down after I uh, went to college, so, yeah. You want me to look at the camera, or you, or how you want me to do it? <laughs> now this is pushing towards the east, not to threaten us, and I don't think, as I've been saying, this cone is going to push further east, but... Storm surge could reach up to 18 feet. Again. Be there to help you clean up and rebuild, to help you get Florida get moving again. And we'll be there at every step of the way. Category 4. Storm surge erupted onto Fort Myers Beach. Flooding businesses and hotels. Water rising to second-story balcony. Wasteland of debris downtown Fort Myers right on the coast. It's really an unrecognizable landscape. So wiped out right now. A boat on a tennis court, a golf cart in the palm trees, homes level. Oh yeah, so I opened the first door just because uh, I had a, my whole condo was full of video games and uh, yeah, so I got married and she wanted it. She didn't really want the whole house to be like a video game museum, so, <laughs> so yeah, so I opened and I thought the first year I was going to, uh, I thought that I, everything would just sell really quick and then I'd be stuck with the lease for the rest of the year, but so much stuff got traded in, so it, it worked. Uh, that location, uh, so I chose uh, right next to Barefoot Beach. I was two bucks on the beach uh, because I got married on uh, Barefoot Beach. So I like the beach area a lot down there. So, yeah. so my favorite gaming memory would be playing NES uh, with my friends. Just everybody having a, a bunch of games and uh, like my friend making the Zelda map. We didn't know that you could just buy a Nintendo Power. So. He had every sheet of paper was a different square and had it up on his wall. Uh, I have an older brother, so we got our first Nintendo. It was probably like Christmas 86 or 87. So yeah, so the original Nintendo, Mario, Duck Hunt. And then uh, I actually got the Sega Game Gear as my first handheld instead of the uh, Game Boy because it was, uh, it was in color and we could watch TV on it. So it had a little like TV adapter. And then uh, went Super Nintendo. Uh, and then I didn't have the N64 when I was a kid. And then skipped to the PlayStation One and played a bunch of Tony Hawk and stuff on there. So, but I mainly just play. Mainly grew up on like side scroller Mario, so that's what I still still enjoy the most now. So, yeah. So I'm a huge uh, huge pro wrestling fan. Uh, my grandpa used to take me when I was a. Or I used to watch it with my grandpa when I was a kid. So, and then. So I've just watched it my whole life. Uh, so it's AEW now, which is really good. Every time we go to the event, we get some chairs. So I wish I would have kept all the chairs I had, because then I I used to sell them, but now, yeah, could have had a full row. So uh, I I just stayed at my house during the hurricane. So we, yeah, I didn't I. Uh, I would I was at the store in the morning and then I was actually I think I was open that morning and uh, had some people come in, in the morning and then I closed once it like started like just raining a little bit just to go home to make sure nothing happened at the house and we had some down trees and stuff at the house but yeah so thought that it would still just pass us by and not really not much would happen and then uh, I saw well my wife paused the TV and it was a picture from uh, across the street at the condos towards the, the uh, it was kind of zoomed out but it was towards the, the store so you could still see you could see the building and the water was already like up to the like a uh, probably a foot past the window or something like that and so and that was before the surge even started so I knew it was yeah when I got to the next day it would probably be all all gone so yeah so uh, with Hurricane Ian I wasn't wasn't worried because everybody kept saying it was going north, and I took uh, I took everything out of my store for Hurricane Irma and took it to my house for Irma, and now I live out in the estates in um, in Naples, and the the 
hurricane went right over my house, the eye went right over the house and ripped part of my roof off and their water didn't raise at all for Irma behind the store. So I figured it would be fine and then yeah, it wasn't, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. Eight bit. Maybe one day I'll rebuild. I don't know if I'm gonna rebuild in Florida, but sixteen foot storm surge. The building was underwater and it all just got carried. Carried away. Oh, it's uh, 10 o'clock, uh, my buddy Seth found some plywood and we uh, boarded it up for the night. I mean, it's just, it's all trash inside, but everything's, <sighs> everything's destroyed, but uh, Yeah, I just didn't want people going going through my shit, even though it's all trash. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably get the truck here, so I'll probably sleep outside in the truck. Nothing else, I mean, there's nothing I can do, but it's nothing, what am I, I don't want to go home and just sit there, so. Yeah, so uh, so driving to the store after Ian, uh, I waited until the sun came up and then we left and uh, it probably took took an hour to get there because of all the closed roads and stuff and then when we drove up there was just game. Well, before we drove, before we got to the building you could see games in like the ditches and stuff and like my big uh, TV, I used to have six TVs and a big uh, wooden frame kind of TV console thing that I made and that was actually... Uh, on the bridge, like two, like a block and a half before the the store. So, yeah, there was a there was there was a ton of stuff. If you had been in the old store, uh, you, like people come in this one, the new one, and think that there's a ton in here. But I had the, the like these. This building's only 300 square feet bigger than the other one. The other one was 2,700 square feet. This one's 3,000 square feet. I just had it so packed full of stuff. So I probably had. So people come in here and think that there's a lot of stuff. I had over 20 times the amount of stuff in the, the other store. So probably, I would say, over half of it had, because uh, the walls, the side walls had got pushed in and then uh, the whole front was gone. So like all the windows and everything. So like probably three fourths of it had floated out and then the other, uh, yeah, the other 25% of it was, that was still in there was, I had all sat in salt water for a day, so it was all, all ruined, so, yeah. Old location, the old store uh, is getting, they told me in, uh, in November that it was going to be uh, tore down, so, yeah, they're tearing the building down because there was too much damage to it, and uh, I'm not sure when, but, yeah, I, I hadn't been down there since, no, since end of November, so I thought that they had tear, torn it down yet, but I have people that, when I first opened, we were driving to the old location, thinking that I was opening back up there. So, oh yeah, I stayed. I stayed in Florida. I was actually. Uh, I had my the first two weeks after the hurricane. I was getting my house all ready with like all the outside, all the trees and the the landscaping. I got all done, and then uh, we were actually uh, listing the house for sale. And I was going to move back to Iowa, where my like my family and friends are from. So, uh, and I was just going to go back to teaching, and then. Uh, I never thought I'd be able to get the inventory to open again. And, uh, yeah, so what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so I stayed in Florida. Uh, after I got, I got all the, the positive messages from everybody, just uh, so I, I knew I had the clientele to stay. But then once I got, once I started getting the, the messages about the, the big four collections that I bought, then I thought, uh, since I have all the, uh, all the positive support from all the uh, all the people that come into the store, I knew that they'd still be still be coming in, and I'd get to see everybody I never thought I'd see again. So that was 
that was pretty neat, so that's kind of why I stayed, stuck it out. Yeah. That day I started, the, the day of the hurricane, I started getting uh, messages from people on Facebook and, and uh, my, uh, just my cell phone number is my store number, so uh, uh, text messages and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, it was that helped a lot. And, uh, and then, uh, so I didn't think I would ever be able to reopen because of the inventory. Uh, and then it was like mid-November, I got a call from a guy that would come in twice a year from Chicago. And uh, he was at, they were actually moving down here. So they were buying a condo down here, that, which is a lot smaller than the house they had in uh, Chicago. They had a 2,900 square foot basement in Chicago. And he had been collecting his whole life. And uh, so it was just full of video games. And once I video called with him and we came up with a price, uh, I thought maybe I could, you know, get it turned around and start it up again. So then I actually got a call from another guy that came in all the time and uh, he was in Naples with a big collection. And then one in Tampa that came in, he would come in like probably once every three months, he would come down. Uh, and, and then the last, the another one was from, uh, so one Naples, one Fort Myers, one Tampa, and then one uh, Chicago. Uh, opening this store, I looked around at all the different, uh, strip malls and all the different places in around the area. I wanted to stay kind of in between Fort Myers and Naples so everybody could drive from both spots. Uh, Gulf Coast Town Center is really good because it's right off the highway. It's right next to by the airport. Uh, it's far away from water. And uh, so I started in here. Uh, my dad came down and helped me put together. He came down, from, drove down from Flo from uh, Iowa to Florida for a week and helped me put together all the cases. Um, yeah, so I tried making it look. I tried buying the same stuff that I had in the other store to make it look like familiar when people walked in. So I had the same like cube cabinets, the same shelving on the wall. I bought so I just bought all new stuff, but the same, so it would kind of look the same. And then uh, I streamlined like the glass cases. I tried to get all the same, and they were a lot cheaper to put together yourself. So they were like half the price if you bought them and put them together. So that took took a couple of days to get all the glass cases together. Here. So this is about three three weeks in. So a lot of the uh, I had a ton of like super rare stuff when I first opened. A lot of that stuff. Not a lot, I mean, a good amount of like the super expensive rare stuff's been sold, but yeah, so it starts like, here's the NES. Uh, you mean to pause that or turn the volume down? Just leave it or turn the volume down? Or... <laughs> uh, I just, yeah. So yeah, and I tried making it kind of uh, in order with, uh, start with Nintendo, so the box NES stuff, the Arkanoid controller, some nice box consoles, uh, and then Super Nintendo. So this is just like the more expensive stuff, anything over like 15 bucks I put behind the glass. The rest are out, out there. And then N64, got the box Pikachu set down there. That's got the the watch in it that's always missing, so that's kind of cool. It's, yeah, the watch makes it really expensive. I had a, one of the coolest, one of my favorite things I got from the uh, Chicago collection was a, a new uh, N64 boom box, and it was down there, but that, I think that sold the first, one of the first days, so that was pretty cool. And then it goes GameCube and Wii, and you can see a bunch of, I've been trying to fill it back up, but a bunch of the spots are empty from stuff selling so it's been it's been really busy here so which is good and then uh wii u and switch and uh yeah then handheld stuff i had a virtual boy down there the first week that's gone that was one of the only can't find them too uh too often with both eyes working so and then some box systems up top uh, yeah, then Sega Genesis, Sega CD, 32X, got the speakers back there, which are kind of neat. Then a lot of the stuff I got from a couple of the collections, like uh, 
the guy in Chicago would buy like one used and one new thing. So like I've got like a brand new power converter and stuff in there. So and then Dreamcast, I had a brand new Dreamcast in there yesterday that sold. So in that spot. Then all the box systems got two, two of the backwards compatible PS3s. So then it goes to the Sony, Sony section with PS1. And then the whole top shelf is all, other than the sports champions, but all these are factory sealed. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of neat stuff. PS4, PSP, and then Xbox, all the Xbox stuff. So, and then got a lava lamp that was a gift the guy brought in to set up, so, yeah. A bunch of Atari consoles and Atari, uh, the GameCom set, which is, and then there was a ja there was a box, I saw a bunch of out-of-box Jaguars, but there was a box Jaguar down in that corner, a bunch of box Jaguars games, some Link stuff, uh, and then, uh, Vectrix, I have three Vectrix. I had a fourth one that was in the box. That one sold. And then the big box, box uh, or big Vectrix set. And then the Channel F is pretty cool. So this is almost a whole Channel F library. Uh, so that's like one of the first, or the first system that took cartridges. And then this is the actual very first production of it. So it's a little bit more expensive box set for it. And then some of these games are pretty, pretty cool for the, Channel F. And this is kind of like the media cabinet. I've got some like Nintendo championship stuff in there. Uh, some letters from Nintendo with the guy that uh, went to the Nintendo championships and took part in it. So, and then some Nintendo Power magazines that, ha that are kind of rare because they have like Pokemon cards in them and stuff. So, and then the vinyl wall, so vinyl soundtracks to the games. These are uh, these are pretty popular now, with uh, especially with like the college kids and stuff. The vinyls uh, and the bags down below. So, and I kind of set it up each system. I'm gonna my goal is to have it f all these full soon. So, just like the other store. So this is like the Nintendo row, GameCube for disc, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, DS, Switch, and then. Uh, PlayStation Row, PS1 through 5, and handhelds, and then Microsoft here, so Xbox stuff, and then that one is uh, Sega, and then this last one's like the magazines, and uh, so it's Nintendo Power magazines, Xbox magazines, the Sega Visions, yeah, a bunch of uh, electric electric gaming magazines, and then manual, and not manuals, but the uh, the guides, so. And then over here, there's like the Hyperkin wall, which uh, they make really good stuff now. Uh, and then the console wall with uh, all the Nintendo, Sega, and then you've got like the original Pong it's here, uh, the Arcadia's, and a bunch of Atari stuff down below, Odyssey, Intellivision, Coleco, and everything, everything that has a sticker on it, that has a price sticker on it, it's been tested and cleaned, so everything everything works and then the top shelf is just all boxed box consoles and then stuff like the video pinball and then some NES NES games uh, controllers accessories ColecoVision games and Atari games so then yeah controllers and accessories so and then a little knickknacks down on the bottom shelf so yeah to help rebuild one of the coolest game stores, take all unwanted games and consoles for trading or cash. Please support Jason at his new shop in Elf Coast Town Center. Long live physical media.